This video will show you how to enable, monitor, and view the details and statistics within the logs of your Amazon S3 buckets. Now this is pretty dry and boring stuff for most people, but you might be surprised by how much and what type of information you can see inside these logs. Let's take a look. So you have the affliction of being an information junkie just like myself. Well, if you got to know some additional information regarding the access to your buckets or the files within your buckets or the uh, files within the folders within your buckets, here's one way in which you can do it using Cloudberry Explorer. You create a bucket for the logs, for that information. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is create a new bucket and of course you have to adhere to all the rules regarding new buckets. Yeah, let's go ahead and create one here and you can name it whatever you want. Um, I would title it something like logs but I'm going to use A1 just so that it pops up at the top of the uh, list here for example purposes. L -O, uh, dot L -O -G -S. Let's see if that works. Hey, nobody else got it. Okay, so okay, so within this bucket here, I can have all the logs for all these other guys tossed in there. How do you do that? Well, let's try this one here for A1 customer. Right click, come on down here and left click on logging settings. Come on up here and check the box use logging. And this is the prefix. This is the one that is the bucket we're creating the logs for or the logs are already going to be there it's just for us to be able to read them and to stash them on our S3 account we log to this guy right here click on OK and there you go so it's not going to be immediate it'll take a little bit of time for the S3 account to propagate all the information from within this bucket to our logs bucket that we just created and as far as cost don't sweat that because remember it's like 10 or 15 cents per gigabyte trust me it's a whole lot of text because that's all it's in here is text to come anywhere near a gigabyte so we're looking at maybe over a year's time with pretty average usage you're maybe looking at eh, 30 maybe 45 50 cents something like that for a year's worth of logs again it's not, the, the price should not even be an object but you can do all these buckets that you have log them into the one and they'll all be having a prefix of the bucket name that you are creating the logs for uh, or that you're tracking the logs for. Now one thing that uh, you can either download download that information, the logs, to your desktop and then open it up inside of say an Excel spreadsheet or if you don't have the Microsoft Excel you can use the open office version which is free and or if you don't want to have anything on your computer then you could always use Google Docs. They have a free spreadsheet available on Google Docs and if you don't know what I'm talking about do a search probably use Google to do a search for Google Docs and it's all web-based application they have a spreadsheet on there you can create a spreadsheet save all your stuff on Google Docs again doesn't cost you anything and create headers and once you see the, your log information you'll be able to pretty much figure out the information on there just by the columns and how they're separated and somewhere close to the end if you scroll further to the right of all the log information you'll see something that has a, a look of URLs uh, it'll start with HTTP and that is going to be the refers and the refers is where that information was accessed from so if, say for example, you provide links to your customers, then uh, you would like to think that your customers downloads that information and then uploads it to their servers and then provide that information from their servers to their customers. Otherwise, they're hotlinking your stuff. And that's not a good thing. That's going to put a cost on you for your usage of your bandwidth. And over time, those pennies will add up, obviously. But if you check out that refer column, and again, it's not going to be titled as such. You'll just have to figure that out on your own. But after you see this enough times, you'll be able to pretty much figure it out. And then again, you can create the headers for those uh, columns on your Excel documents or spreadsheets or the Google Docs, and then just save those. So when you import your logs into those particular documents, you'll be able to see them a little bit easier. And you can see from those from that referrer column and again you can name it whatever you want but from that particular column you can see who's accessing that information and at that 
refer is not one of your customers then they're gaining access to your stuff unauthorized again it's just a way in which you can kind of keep tabs on things and if you're an information junkie like me well it's just more information you have access to again do with that information as you see fit but if you've got the information you can act on it if you don't have the information you're just wondering or just living with your head in the sand so that is how you can create and access and decipher logs on your S3 account using Cloudberry Explorer. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it helps. Thank you very much again. You have a great day.